Okay, first news topic of the week. Uh, State of Unreal happened, um, as is the norm whenever GDC happens. And, uh, well, what can we say? The proceedings were dominated by the debut of a trailer of uh, Marvel 1943, the first game from Amy Hennig's new studio. Um, I think it's fair to say that this is a pretty spectacular trailer and um, it is using Unreal Engine 5, obviously. Um, Alex, what are the highlights here from a technological perspective? Uh, well, there's like maybe three that caught my eye, uh, probably four altogether. Uh, I thought the character rendering was sublime. I was very, I, I mean, the Captain America character with the mask, you can't see much of him throughout most of the trailer, but the other characters you see, like uh, essentially other people that are part of this troop. I don't know exactly what the, the game story is going to be, uh, but there's Black Panther, a, a U.S. soldier with like a bugle in their hands, <laughs> and then, uh, which is very interesting. And then um, some uh, woman character who also seems to be from that Wakanda area, or maybe not. I don't really know this. Yes, Marvel you're stuff. you're quite right. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, the the soldier guy is from the Howling Commandos. Sick. Which, uh, is steeped <laughs> in Marvel lore. Yes. Yeah. Uh, awesome looking character rendering, animation, uh, fidelity of the faces, the the skin shading is ridiculously good. I mean, a lot of this also is obviously coming from the fact that the trailer is showing off uh, directed cutscenes, which, as we know from any game out there, directed cutscenes can place lights in a certain way to be most flattering to a model so that everything is always shadowed. Gameplay isn't a whole other concept uh, at that point, but it, it was really, really good looking. And given essentially, I would say, like the pedigree of Amy Hennig, it's pr it seems to be action adventure Uncharted like, probably, uh, with the focus on cutscenes like that. So, them being as high quality as they are is just fantastic. Uh, they also had a 15 minute long stage demonstration of UE 5.4 running in real time on high-end PC kit. And that also showed off some really cool things that you can maybe see in the trailer too. They had some really great looking smoke rendering and simulation yeah. coming from a barrel that I was very happy to finally see in video games again after like 10 years of it not being there. Um, <laughs> smoke from a barrel? No, just like anything volumetric. I okay. mean, like the only studio that really does volumetric stuff is um, who are the guys who made Returnal? Gosh, my brain is blanking. Housemark. Housemark. Like, they seem to be, like, the only studio doing really cool volumetric effects in games that are real-time and, like, fluid-like. Uh, so, like, this, finally seeing again, finally seeing Unreal pushing these things again after a decade of not doing them. Oh, that's that's great. So, I thought this looked great. I'm just very curious to see what um, the real gameplay looks like. And we saw it on PC, and we know UE5 on PC can look really great. But, like, how does it scale the console is a whole other question that I'm very curious about here, but this is just the first showing, so I give them leeway. Mm -hmm. John, thoughts? Uh, I think it would scale to console by being 30 FPS-ish <laughs> best. Uh, yeah. I mean, to me, this was the first Unreal Engine 5 game we've seen since the Matrix demo that actually resembles the Matrix demo. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Where it's actually showing the level of fidelity that we kind of hope to see with this. Um, like you said, the character rendering is absolutely sublime, very realistic, but also just beautifully implemented. And though it is a, a, a really nice combination of strong art design, which, you know, for a Marvel movie, maybe also surprising. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah. no, seriously, it, it, seriously, it's, it's very, very well done in that regard. Uh, like you said, the smoke effects I thought were great. Sort of the, the flow particle field that they generated from the, the smoke coming off of the barrel that has potential. Everything about the, just the, the camera stuff. And they, they showed off, I think, uh, uh, visualization of their nanite density, right? Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just another example of using this sort of, uh, virtualized geometry kind of set up to do like ultra mega dense environment, environmental detail. Yeah. which uh, I love it. Mm -hmm. This is this is really great. Uh, the only thing I will say is that when you see uh, visuals at this level in the context of what's been happening in the AAA space, <laughs> it's it does damper a little bit of the excitement, I might say. You know what I mean? Because you're like, well, I'd be curious to know more about what it took to achieve this and what the game's like budget and manpower efforts look like compared to other 
games playing in the space. If they're able to leverage Unreal to do some of this stuff without dramatically exploding the budget, that would also be very impressive. Right. Um, whereas, I, I get know, what you're saying, John, but there is, I do think that there is a certain degree of, you know, you can see when a game is going to be a home run. And when you look at this trailer, it just looks, you know, it looks expensive, but it kind of looks worth it. And you think it's going to uh, hit the mark financially. I think it would, you know, take something quite extraordinary for this not to be a, a mega hit, right? Well, yeah. you say that, but there's been a lot of issues with superhero-related games over the last however many years, right? They don't often hit, actually. Spider-Man is just about the only one. Yeah. Um, but I think the themes here are different enough, and yeah, it doesn't seem absolutely. like it's, it's following the traditional like open-world uh, cookie-cutter model that we so often see these days. That mm -hmm. plus, I'm really happy to see Amy Amy Hennig's uh, coming back here uh, because I feel like she's had a bad string of luck with projects over the last decade or so. Mm -hmm. So I really hope this gets off the ground and succeeds. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's like when I first see Marvel now in a game, <laughs> I almost just roll my eyes. I'm not interested, but I have to say the trailer actually did captivate me enough where. I am actually interested in the game now, and it's specifically for what they seem to be doing with the game as opposed to it being a Marvel property. World War II, I think, really helps because I always... Okay, I don't... Rich knows the lore. <laughs> I, I've seen, like, three movies, all contextless. I saw, like, the Captain America, the third one, like, Civil War, mm, after yeah. not even having seen the second movie, and I was just, like, totally lost. Um, but <laughs> I went on a date to see that one. That was also awful. But uh, either way, um, I think taking place in World War II, grounding it a bit more, having less be about sky lasers and uh, uh, sky lasers. and ages of ultra nose and whatnot. Uh, I think that really grounds it. And uh, I'm just curious to see what the heck um, the play is like in the game because the the the, the key art is four characters arranged uh -oh. in like a you know cool pose. I'm like a little worried that it's like. Oh, no. You know, you know not, what I mean. I've, I've not seen enough Gotham Knights. I've seen enough numbers. loots and Please numbers. No. I'm just a little worried about those things, but uh, I think it would be make much more sense to just have um, you play as four different characters over the span of a single player campaign, and they each have different play styles, so you kind of get that like variety. Uh, like obviously, Captain America can do very different things than Black Panther. Then can do what did you call the bugled? Bearing gentleman. I'm not sure what his name is, but he's a part of the Howling Commandos. <laughs> there we the go. Boogie Woogie yeah. Bugle Boy. The, yeah, the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, the Howling <laughs> Commando. I'm curious to see how the Howling Commando plays. Uh, he has like a Springfield rifle. Probably cool. Shooting stuff. Shooting Nazis. Should be fun. I okay. would say, um, based on the visuals we're seeing here, the only other upcoming game beyond Hellblade 2, which looks really great in its own way, uh, that I would expect to come close to this or possibly exceed it is the next Gears. I right. think a lot of us are kind of breathlessly awaiting to see what the Coalition has in store because I do expect them to match and exceed what we saw in the Matrix demo, possibly at a much higher frame rate. So that's what yeah. I'm hoping for. That's what mm -hmm. we're hoping for, right? I mean... I mean, that's... who knows? I mean, yeah. I feel like the the Coalition went so big on 60 FPS with Gears 5 while also pushing it to be one of the best-looking Unreal Engine 4 games. Absolutely. I can't imagine them walking that back and going back to 30, but we'll see. I'd be surprised, yeah, I agree. I mean, this trailer did look pretty spectacular, um, and I do think it is novel enough to separate it from the usual superhero fare, and I think the yeah. World War II grounding, the the setting there is is kind of like a stroke of genius. There's quite a lot of characters that are in the modern day Marvel universe that are actually originating from Second World War, oddly enough. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of weird reasons for that. I mean, the comics started effectively, the, the new Marvel age began in the 60s. So it wasn't really too much of a stretch to have characters that were like, you know, in their 40s who fought in World War II. But owing to the weird time dilation that happens in, in comics, they kind <laughs> of just gradually aged over the years um, in, into our modern era without actually looking that much older. It's kind of weird. But here, 
we've got I think it's Black Panther's the current Black Panther's grandfather which kind of makes sense right Captain America was an icicle for God knows how long <laughs> so, so it's the original Captain America there and uh, they're kind of hinting at the trailer that there's possibly other super soldiers in there as well there's a couple of examples that they could have if they're kind of being comic comics accurate like the Black Widow or even Wolverine if they have ah. the <laughs> mm. you have to have the rights right yeah. oh my gosh these these Marvel things are obscene although I do think the term super soldier is carrying a lot of weight there because you know yeah. <laughs> Captain America was a super soldier there, you know <laughs> It's it's all a bit sort of being pushed in different directions to encompass Black Panther as a super soldier as well. You know, he he, he eats herbs that give him super <laughs> strength fundamentally. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I mean, I think it looks spectacular. I thought the rooftop chase um, in Paris just looked phenomenal. Uh, mm. I was getting some flashbacks in a good way to uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, but I doubt it's going to be open world. Just don't think that the, you know, the, the, the amount of money it would make to, to produce this level mm. of fidelity in, a, in an open world it doesn't make any sense. Also, like, I what's mean, the point? looking at the types of projects Amy has worked on, I just don't see that making sense either. Yeah. Right? She likes to tell these sort of more straightforward stories, and it just doesn't necessarily fit in a big open world game. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else from State of Unreal you wanted to talk about, Alex? Because before before we recorded, you basically said you didn't want to talk about it until you actually <laughs> well, saw, saw the features. I want to see them in person yeah. because I'm, I mean, I've seen a lot of Unreal tech demos and a lot of promises about what they can do. And then I test them locally and I'm always like halfway there with agreeing with them. Yeah. Um, so uh, they're saying like, uh, much better render thread performance under Unreal Engine 5.4. Um, so I can probably see that happening if they did split up the rendering a lot to be much more multi-core aware. Um, they're also talking about um, improvements to hardware ray tracing. Uh, we've heard also elsewhere that they've been improvements to hardware ray tracing, but um, here it's like... <sighs> It's kind of interesting where the generation starts, they target the engine for originally software ray tracing uh, due to RDNA 2 in the consoles, essentially. Like, you can't really rely on good ray tracing performance there. But as the generation goes on, <clears throat> and there's already some Unreal Engine 5 games coming out, you have now PS5 Pro on the horizon, you have AMD, Intel, and of course, NVIDIA uh, pushing hardware ray tracing to different levels. <clears throat> And I think uh, now they're realizing like, oh, we should probably start taking advantage of all this die space that uh, <laughs> these people are de dedicating to it. Uh, and they're actually finally pushing it in a way and trying to get around obstacles regarding CPU performance and also some other things. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I don't know what it means necessarily for console games, but for PC, I hope it means that a lot of developers uh, start implementing hardware ray tracing modes because the quality is superior and apparently it's going to be very performant too now. So... Uh, but once again, this is all stuff I would like to test on my own in a state of mm. Unreal video for myself. I did it for like 5.0 originally. I did it for 5.1, I even think. And 5.2, I definitely did one. Uh, I did also a roundup video of Unreal Engine 5 releases to say like yep. what's wrong and what's not. So this is just good follow-up that I'll, I'll think I'll do over time. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not a Star Citizen situation where you said you'd never cover it again until they did uh, Vulcan support. Yeah. And like, was it now three, four years on? We're still waiting for the Vulcan It's three support. years on. Uh, and uh, the, the best part is I'm pretty sure the next released, which is, was it 4.23? Or is it 3.23? I always forget the first or number. Uh, they're adding in like already server meshing which is crazy um but they still don't have vulcan and i think for that release it hasn't been slated yet so i may be waiting till this summer to cover star citizen again okay uh whatever i mean they might just be holding it back because you know they don't want you to do a video <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's definitely conspiracy it. theory yeah conspiracies do it okay i mean this trailer did look going back to the point of this news topic i mean the trailer does look spectacular it's out next year so i'm just presuming there's a huge amount of stuff we just haven't seen at this point and just this this teaser to to sort of tide us over until the next uh, promotional beat i guess but i've got to say this is one of the best things i've seen since the matrix awakens demo and it kind of does kind of feel as though this was the unreal engine that we were kind of promised all those years ago 
And it's, you know, it just goes to show how long it takes to make a game with the latest yeah. technological advances, right? I think that's become even increasingly true, but we, we did see a similar thing with Unreal Engine 4, I would argue, where the initial games released for that on that engine were not let's, very well, impressive. Well, let's not words. They were dreadful. They were, they were dreadful. It was bad. They looked terrible. They didn't run well. There was serious concerns there. Uh, in the end, Unreal Engine 4, I would say, kind of got there. There are some, uh, there are some uh, issues that... Uh, have never really truly been solved that can continue to plague modern releases, but there have been some stunning examples from specific developers using Unreal. Um, yeah, I mean, the but fu- nothing the- ever reached Infiltrator like at all. Infiltrator still like slaps every other like Unreal <laughs> Four release like sideways. It's, it's just kind of watch a sh- Infiltrator. Seriously, it's watch kind of it. a it's shame like an we Unreal don't. Game. What's, what's interesting is that Infiltrator is the equivalent to that. Uh, there was that one Unreal Engine <laughs> Three demo you were called yes. the, the Cigar Man, and uh, Batman Arkham Knight essentially went for that visual style, and I think it did pretty good at matching that kind of look in yeah. a yeah. shipping game. And we don't really seem to have an Unreal Engine Four equivalent to that. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it's probably the it? Samaritan. Sorry, Samaritan, Samaritan demo. Yeah, probably yeah. one of the best examples is still. Man, it's weird. Jedi Jedi Survivor is interesting because it's both one of the best visual examples, but also one of the best <laughs> showcases of what's wrong with Unreal Engine. <laughs> so yeah. it, it kind of it's both good and bad at the same time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's quite interesting because um, Arkham Knight does serve as a kind of uh, full stop to to the Unreal Engine three era. It, it did it in spectacular style, it, I'd argue. It was an exclamation point on Unreal Engine, basically. <laughs> like this, this is Unreal Engine three at its absolute best. Bam. Uh, although I will say it's not quite on par, but uh, Injustice two and Mortal Kombat eleven, I thought. Yeah, yeah, I get. What they're also good phenomenally yeah. good for that. And in fact, the new M Mortal Kombat one, in some ways, looks arguably worse but or at least not as large of an upgrade as you would expect Given and that just switched to unreal engine 4 so they were seriously flexing with uh their older stuff yeah okay um okay well that's state of unreal and that's marvel 1943 and not uh, capcom's should... 1943 marvels <laughs> Um, yeah, two slightly different projects there. <laughs> Dude, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Marvel versus Capcom, 1943. That'd be a great game. <laughs> yes, oh, <man>. <laughs> it's like a bunch of like planes just shooting at superheroes. <laughs> be great. Space lasers. Mm-hmm. I'd just like to end this uh, this segment with an apology to all Marvel fans for. Uh, <laughs> Alex's bizarre <laughs> interpretations. <laughs> what? 